Vernice, V-E-R-N-I-C-E-G, Armour, A-R-M-O-U-R. What is your current position in the Marine Corps? Well, right now, I'm in what they say the perfect place is in the Marine Corps. I'm a captain, I'm in the fleet, and I'm actually piloting out there flying with the grunts, doing close air support. So, as they say, in the prime of my career. What is your career background in aviation experience? Well, my career background in aviation experience actually started while I was TAD at HMX-1 in Quantico, Virginia. Took some private lessons in the Cessna 152 before starting flight school. But uh, went to flight school, started around January 2000 and completed in July 2001 for the base training of primary, intermediates, and advanced. And you transition from fixed wing into helos if that's the route that you're going to take and fly Cobras or any of the other helicopter platforms. After I graduated flight school, I went to the Fleet Replacement Squadron or the FRS and that's where you actually get your instrument and FAM training in the Cobra, which is the aircraft I'm standing next to right now. After you get that basic initial training in this operational helicopter, the Cobra itself, you go to the Fleet Squadron where they start teaching you how to fight the Cobra, which is what we're doing out here today. Describe your operational flying experience thus far. Uh, thus far, uh, I've been flying since, well, in the Cobra, um, since about July of 2000, or August, rather, of 2001 and it's been great learning how to fly this helicopter, maneuver it, um, get in and out of zones safely. As far as going into the tactical squadron, that's been awesome learning how to fight the squadron, employ the weapon systems, and uh, become the best pilot that I need to be to bring me and my fellow pilots out back safely. Describe your, your combat plan. Combat flying experience, um, believe it or not, is similar in many ways to the regular everyday operational flying experience because you have to take off, you have to land, and you have to do it safely uh, to come back. The one difference with the combat, of course, is you're out there and you are shooting and you are taking fire and then you're returning fires on that fire and you're supporting the grunts. So combat is... Uh, quite different because there's a living, moving target out there. These flies are ready to get to Nope, I won't wave while I'm answering a question. <laughs> yeah. just, uh, just watch like the military jargon or uh, active and stuff like that. Did I say more that I didn't explain? Like FRS, I said yeah. fleet replacement squadron? There, there was one more I came up with. Okay, I'll try. Yeah, I was trying to watch that. Cite examples of marine aviation role in operations. There are many uh, roles of marine aviation uh, during my combat experience out here. The few I'll touch on is one close air support, which I'm intimately close to and familiar with which is called CAS by the Marines and the grunts down on the ground. That's where the Cobra comes in and puts fires down on the enemy if they're in contact with the troops on the ground and hopefully we suppress or kill whoever is trying to kill or harm them. Um, another platform that we use is the Huey. It's a utility aircraft. It's here on the Mew as well and it's used for CAS sometimes but it's also used for uh, command and control, like a general or whoever's running the fight at that particular time can get in there, put on a, a, a headset and listen to what's going on and actually make command decisions from that aircraft. Another aircraft is the 46 and the 53, which are both transport helicopters. And they can take troops, whether it's a quick reaction force or uh, basically just taking somebody back up to the rear to you know, get some R&R &R or rest or regroup or grab some gear from the rear. They do most of the transport for the troops and with cargo and ammo resupply. So those are the big um, 
operational during combat that I've seen, whether it's assault, combat, or utility support. How are Marine Aviators different from their peers and other services? I'd say Marine Aviators, uh, okay, I'm going to start that over. I really don't know how Marine Aviators are different from their peers because I haven't been an aviator in any other service. But what I do know is we're very meticulous, professional, and anal because we have to be. And sometimes we might come off a different way, but when you're out there, you know, in there with the grunts, putting fires within 100 meters of their position, you, there's no room to make a mistake. So you're out there every day trying to keep the guys on the ground safe and keep us safe in the air to have a successful mission and get everybody back safely. How does marine aviation history influence these marine aviators? And the ethos. Okay. Ethos one. What unique challenges are involved in being a marine aviator? There are a couple unique challenges in being involved uh, as a marine aviator. One. I guess the most obvious to many is that you're away from your friends and family uh, quite a bit in times like this when things are going on operationally throughout the world. The Marine Corps isn't the largest organization, so we get tapped a lot, you know, in the squadrons that we have. You could, uh, for example, I was gone last time for eight months, came back, and I was back about eight months, and we're back out again on a deployment that looks like it might be even longer than eight months this time. So. Uh, the biggest one I would think is just the, the challenge of being away from your friends and family quite a bit, especially if you're a married Marine with, with uh, children. But on the other side, the flying challenges would be academically and stick-wise, just making it through flight school. You have to study, study hard and be diligent about the goals that you want. And once you get out and you have your wings, knowing the, in, the inside and outside, every nook and cranny of the aircraft that you're going to be flying, whether it's operationally back in the rear or in combat out here in Iraq. What, what is the difference between training and combat flying? Describe the contributions of road marine wing marine aviation in LIF. A lot of contributions of uh, road marine wing aviation in OIF. Uh, as I stated before, you have the CAST, which is close air support, which I'm very intimate with, which is going in there and helping those guys down on the ground, delivering fires, taking out targets, um, delivering, you know, hellfire, tow, rockets, guns just basically putting rounds and fires on target. Then you have uh, the utility aircraft that can do several things, command and control, um, take a small group of Marines somewhere where they need to go. Then you have the 46s and 53s that play a large role in the transport of troops and resupply, especially ammo when the big firefights are going on or the quick reaction force or a trap team uh, if a helicopter goes down and the ground guys can't get to them in time, the helicopters go in, drop off a quick reaction force, secure that area, get the pilots on board safely, and then get everyone out. So uh, there are a lot of roles going on with the rotary wing aviation, and yeah, I don't think we could do many of the things without our aircraft here. What challenges do marine aviators' families face? Marine aviator families uh, face, I, I feel, one of the greatest challenges because their loved one is out here 
in Iraq, in, or in Afghanistan, or Djibouti, you know, wherever we are operationally in the world at this time. And they're wondering if their Marine is okay when they're watching Fox or CNN and uh, they see, you know, two Marines killed today, but the names haven't been released, or, you know, they see the ticker tape uh, going across the screen, Cobra down or Huey down, 53 down. You know, they're wondering, is their Marine okay? And I'm sure that has to take a huge toll on family members sitting back in the rear. They feel a sense of helplessness. And I wouldn't want to be in that spot. I'm better out here knowing that I'm fine and I'm doing what I can do to help the other Marines and keep them safe and bring them back, and that I'm doing my part and I don't have to worry about whether I'm safe or not.